How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about Candace Owens suing Facebook fact checkers. Now, this is a really important thing, and full disclosure, I'm not getting paid at all to do this. I don't get any affiliate money. This is not an ad at all. You know, I just saw her do a video on Instagram, and it was on Twitter, so I'm like, okay, I need to do a video on this because this is really important. This is a big part of the election, and this is issue of social media and the so-called fact checkers will exist for a very long time long beyond trump long beyond any kind of whatever we got going on right now with the election long beyond that you're still going to have these social media platforms that are very very big and extremely influential understand this before i get into the meat of the conversation about kenneth owens video and the website people are cutting the court right they're watching less and less cable news less and less uh local they're, they're watching less stuff on television newspapers are pretty much dead people are going to the instagram to the facebook to the twitter to get news information and what's happening is that the social media platforms are kind of transitioning into newspapers and you can't do that because you have section 230 that allows these platforms to do certain things that newspapers cannot do you understand Here's a good example, and I've said it before in different videos, but I'm going to say it again right now. If you are a New York Post and you put out the story, you must have everything fact checked. Everything's got to be credible. You got to have sources. It's got to be true information unless it's opinion, and you still got to be responsible with that. If you put out true information that's not true, like you say it's true, but it's not true, you may be sued for that. Okay, if you put out private information, you may be sued for that. That's how Gawker is no longer around because they put out the Hollywood Hulk Hogan tape. They shouldn't have put out the illicit, the nasty tape. And they got sued into the ground. They got sued to the point where they don't even exist anymore. Because if you are a publisher, not a platform, there are certain laws that apply to you. You can't just do whatever you want to do. You're regulated by the government. It is what it is. Now, if you are a platform that abides by section 230, like a Facebook, Twitter, etc., then you don't have these laws on your back. So let's say, for example, Broncos fan 8953 uploads a picture or something that somebody wants to sue over or it's stolen or something like that. Twitter would not be responsible. Why? Because section 230. Twitter didn't upload it. They're not a publisher. They don't publish stories on their platform. All they do is host others' stories. They host others' news and information, all right? If anybody were to be sued, it'd be the person that posted it, if anybody, not Twitter itself. But see, when Twitter becomes a publisher putting out stories and articles and editorializing and stuff like that, then it becomes a problem. Same thing with Facebook, same thing with Instagram, which is also Facebook, same thing with any social media platform. When you begin to editorialize and to pick and choose what's right and what's wrong and make decisions, now... You are going into the realm of being a publisher, not a platform. Therefore, your Section 230 benefits of not being sued by publishing certain things, that goes away. So when you post an addendum to a Trump tweet talking about, oh, that's not really true. Here's real information. Well, wait a minute. But we're talking about something totally different now. Now we're talking about you are engaging in publishing, you're editing, you're making your own stories up. If you have an addendum on the Trump tweet that links to a full op-ed from Twitter is like, all right, what are we doing? You are a publisher, not a platform. And then to the whole thing about the so-called fact checkers. Who are these fact checkers? Where are they coming from? Who are they being paid by? I think one guy has a fact checking company, organization, whatever, who used to be over at CNN. All right. So like the question is, how many of these so-called fact checkers that are on Facebook actually uh you know how many of them are actually on the right versus the left is it mostly left leaning so-called fact checkers and who fact checks the fact checkers who's like leaning over their shoulders to determine what their fact checking is correct or incorrect when you look at facebook and you see who had their pages demonetized or outright banned you're going to see a list of mostly conservatives I'll, it'd be really hard to find anybody on the left that has been censored by Facebook or had their page 
shut down or their views diminished, their reach diminished. It's really hard to find anybody on the left that fits into that category. As a matter of fact, they have Antifa Facebook pages up on the platform right now. They tried to delete my page. They, they demonetized it. They, you know, they can't advertise 30 days. They put me in so-called Facebook jail. I can't do anything on the Facebook page. And it limited my reach. And they, they told me, it was like, okay, you have a history of putting out false information. I did a, I think what did me was the article I put out about hydroxychloroquine. And all I reported on was the doctor's summit. It wasn't my opinion about, oh, this would be a miracle drug or whatever. This was me talking about doctors that were giving testimony about their own benefits from using it out there in the field. Okay, people that have had patients that they've treated with certain drugs that have worked. That's not me giving an opinion. That's just me reporting on a story that actually happened. And for that, they retaliated against me. And there are other guys and girls on Facebook that have had similar experiences for different reasons. But the common denominator is that they were all conservative, all Republican. That is the main issue. And of course, that's going to play into the election. Look at it like this. If you have a lot of conservative influencers, pages, uh, news platforms or whatever, they have their views diminished and they're demonetized and, you know, they're just kind of messed with. That's going to diminish the ability of the right to get news out there, to drive voters to the polls. It's going to hurt us in the election. It's going to hurt us in general being able to get certain ideas out there. it will be to the point where the conservative voices are intentionally being suppressed and the more liberal left-leaning voices are giving the leg up. Okay, they do that on Twitter as well. If you go to Twitter and you look at the trending topics, or well, it's not even trending anymore, it's just a topics panel, okay? That's all curated information from Twitter. How are they doing that while still being considered a so-called platform on the Section 230? How does that really happen? Same thing on Facebook, okay? You may get certain stories that are kind of watered down, dumbed down. It's just, it's just not right. And you got to have legal action here because you can't just claim, oh, I got section 230. I could do whatever I want. When you're editorializing, when you're adding stuff, when you are removing and or diminishing certain voices because they have a certain voice. You can't do that. So I support what Candace is doing 100%. And I think that you're going to see this Court action happened a lot over the next few days, weeks, months, and years. Okay, I'm not sure how long this will take for Candace to really be able to get some traction as far as this uh, lawsuit between her and the Facebook fact checkers. But I mean, I'm with her 100, percent and I think that this is the this this is the path. People are talking about, oh, we got to get out there and fight in the street like the left. Understand this: the left, they out there, they they fighting. They've been in Portland fighting for I don't know how many months, days. Like since March, they've been fighting. What did you get? Like, what do you get as a result of all this, this chaos and, and the violence? OK, they still out there after the election in Portland. All right. They, they voted for Biden in the state, but it didn't get their extreme far leftist person in there. And they still fighting. That's not going to overturn the election. We got to do things by the book, in my humble opinion. Now, you can't just act like everything's all right and become demoralized either because People kind of fall into different categories as I close. One category is you become demoralized and say you give up. I never vote again. You don't want to do that. Then there are those who want to go out there with arms. You don't want to go that route either. Just go about things in a proper way. And I got faith that things will work out. If you got Zuckerberg and these guys violating the law and they're not getting prosecuted for it. You see what I'm saying? Then you got something you can actually, you know, attack. Something you can actually, you know, sink your teeth into. But I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? Do you think that this lawsuit will go forward? Will there be some traction there to sue the fact checkers? Who are these people? You know, what political affiliation do they have? Are they mostly on the left? Mostly on the right? Whatever your thoughts on that are, let me know in the comments below. Um, do you think that social media in general needs to be checked? You know, are they biased against the right? I mean, to me, that's kind of a rhetorical question. I think that everybody knows that they are. Even if you are a left-leaning person or a liberal, you got to have your eyes open to what's happening. You got to understand that social media is heavily favored towards the left because most of these companies 
are located over in the belly of the beast of liberalism in California, right? Like I'm talking about San Francisco Bay Area right there where it all started, where all this social justice stuff started right there in that area. So they're coming from right there. The employees are going to be living in that area. They're going to be kind of wrapped up in it. You know, the, the blue hair furry, they're going to be right there in the area. They're going to be the employees working there. So even if a Zuckerberg may not be as left leaning as his platform would indicate, it's relevant because of the employees that are there. But employees, no employees, Zuckerberg or what, we got to be lawful. We got to abide by the law. We can't just do whatever we want. And you can't have the stranglehold on the means of communication. Now, I got to add one last piece before I close. People say, hey, let's go to Parler. Let's go to Gab. That's what they want you to do over in Big Tech. Because if you go to Parler or Gab or some kind of alternative and it's non-organic, what will happen is, It'll just be kind of a castaway place for conservative voices. You might as well just shout into a shoebox and put it under your bed because nobody will see it. I mean, friends will see it, people that you know will see it, but you got to get those that don't know about politics and those on the left. You got to get everybody, the whole world, not just a select few people. And as of right now, Facebook, Twitter, etc., they control the larger means of communication. We got to attack at the top. Not just settle for the bottom and give up. I think that if you say, oh, forget Twitter, forget Facebook, it's like waving the white flag. Now, you got to get those places because if we abandon them, they'll be able to control whatever is being said. 99.9% .9 of all information will come through them and then we'll be relegated to these offshore places where nobody ever sees us. So we got to get straight to the top and not settle for the crumbs that they want to allow us to have. But whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.